When you first start using a power meter, the wealth of data that you get during and after your ride can seem a little bit overwhelming. So how do you best analyze that data and not spend your entire evening doing so? Well, probably the best way to start is to use a piece of software called Training Peaks, which is something that I've used since 2004 when I very first got a power meter. Now, it uses various different metrics to help you make sense of all that data that you collect on each and every ride, ultimately helping you to become a better rider, which is, of course, what we all want. So let's go through a few of those key metrics now, the ones that we look at after each of our rides. <laughs> Now, the first of these is normalised power. This was a metric that was devised by Dr Andy Coggan and it takes into account power variance through your ride. So the difference between a hill interval session and a longer, steadier ride. Now, what it does is it gives you the most accurate indication of the true physiological cost of your workout. Yeah, it's much more representative of the real effort that you've put into ride versus average power, which is simply a numerical average. So to give you a real world example, if you went out for one hour and held a steady 200 watts throughout, your average power and your normalized power would be 200 watts. On the other hand, if you did the first one, first 20 minutes at 100 watts, the second 20 at 200, and the third 20 at 300, your average would still be 200 watts, but your normalized power would be 240. Much more representative of the fact that you dug quite deep in the last 20 minutes. Next up, we have got Intensity Factor, or IF, which, as is fairly obvious, gives a measure of just how intense your ride was. So basically, you can look at this very quickly and make sure that if you wanted to go hard, you went hard enough, and if you wanted to go easy, you went easy enough. It is simply your normalised power for a ride divided by your functional threshold power. So that's the power that you can sustain maximal for one hour. So if you saw an intensity factor of 0.8, that would mean that you had ridden at 80% of that maximal hour power for the duration of your ride. So if, for example, we took a GCN cafe recovery ride and one of us saw an intensity factor of 0.85, we'd know that we hadn't gone easy at all and we'd had a bit of a tear up. Don't know what you're talking about, Zai. Uh, but IF is actually a really good way of showing what the effects of increased fitness are. So to give you an example, if at the start of the season you head out for a long ride at a normalised power of 210 watts, whilst your FTP is 280 watts, you'll come out of an IF of 0.75. Then later on in the year, once you've gained fitness and your FTP is up to 300 watts, if you did that exact same ride, in terms of 210 watts normalised power, your IF would only be 0.7. So that's the same ride, it was actually easier. And then to gain more fitness, you're gonna have to go harder. Now the next metric is something called TSS, or training stress score, which for me personally is probably the most important. Something I look at not just after each ride and race, but also as a tool to help plan my training towards a big event. What the number is, is a representation of how hard a particular day was for you. And it's a much more accurate one than say, for example, calories burned, which a lot of pros have used in the past. And it's calculated using a combination of normalised power, intensity factor, and how long you're riding for. Now TSS can be viewed not only daily, but also give you weekly and monthly totals to give you your total training load. It can also be used to plan your day, your week, your month, or even your year to make sure that you're pushing hard enough, yet yeah, not too hard. And then conversely, make sure you're going easy enough on your recovery rides and weeks. Variability index is really important at showing you the particular physiological demands of a particular event. So seeing as no ride would ever really be at a completely constant power output due to terrain, corners, and surges, etc., variability index will actually show you just how variable your ride really was. And you find it by dividing your normalized power 
by your average power. Yeah, or well, Training Peaks will just do that calculation for you. Now, there are a couple of instances and events where a fairly smooth power output is normally optimal. So I'm thinking of things like an individual time trial or maybe a sportive where you get to go at your own pace from the start right through to the finish. So in these instances, you'll have a VI of around 1 to 1.05. On the other hand, if you do a criterium or maybe a road race with loads of short, punchy climbs in, you might well have a VI in excess of 1.2. So you need to assess the demands of the type of events you want to do and then make sure you do enough specific training to prepare for them. Finally, I always took a quick glance at the peak power curve because this gives you your best for your ride at all the different durations. So, for example, your best one second, your best 10 seconds, your best five minutes, and what you did in the total duration of the ride, plus everything in between. Now, if you've done any particularly hard efforts like climbs, etc., it's a great way of comparing those efforts to previous personal bests. And it's also a great way of making sure that the training you're doing and the target, the areas that you're targeting in training are actually improving. Yeah, and you can actually set your critical power curve to show your normalised power as opposed to your actual average. And that is a great way of keeping track of your functional threshold power after a particularly hard ride or race, where you might feel like you might have nudged it forward, which is always bloody great. Now, I will admit that initially all these numbers can seem relatively confusing, but I assure you that if you regularly look at your power files after rides or races, you'll quickly get to know what they mean and how they can work for you. So, you'll be able to assess just how well, and sometimes, unfortunately, just how badly you have done on a ride. And actually, you can also use a couple of the metrics that we've just explained to help plan an entire season, something which we'll get around to explaining, hopefully, in a not too distant future. Now, if you actually want to find your FTP, then we've got a video specifically about that, and you can get through to it just up there. Or for indoor training, you can actually find your fitness. That way, click just down there. And to subscribe to the Global Cycling Network, it's free. All you've got to do is click on this globe about here.